Good day, this is Guy Allen. I'm the senior economist for the International Grains Program at Kansas State University. Last week we spoke a bit about the energy and its impact on the ethanol sector and its resulting price impact on grains and oilseeds. This week we want to talk a bit about the livestock sector and particularly uh, meat and animal proteins and what's happening in that area. Feed grains demand which support from grains which supports the livestock sector makes up about 44% of total U.S. domestic consumption of feed grains. If you throw in exports, look at total production, the number drops to about 40% of total U.S. production is consumed by the livestock sector. The impact to COVID-19 has been quite significant, not so much on the production side of grains and oil seeds, but definitely on its consumption and across the uh, livestock industry. That impact can be seen in transportation and logistics as they struggle to deliver product to the final end user. There's also been observable demand destruction uh, for meat and animal products. And we're also seeing a shift in demand as people shelter in place. Let's look first at the impact on logistics and transportation and how that's impacting the, the meat and livestock sector. While fuel costs have notably dropped in the last few weeks, freight costs for specialized refrigeration containers to deliver this product to market has gone up. The real concern is finding trucks and drivers, particularly willing to go into high population density area where COVID-19 is more prevalent. These are centers such as New York, Chicago, et cetera. A closely related issue is the inability to secure backhauls out of these areas, uh, which is adding to the overall cost of transportation. While goods are going into areas, there's not product coming out. This lack of a backhaul is added as much as 20 to 40% of the increased cost of transportation. Next, let's look at labor shortages and the impact of labor market on the livestock sector. Many of us have been reading about the shutdown or slowing down of various slaughter and processing facilities across the livestock sector. It is estimated we've lost about 20% of our capacity to date. And this number is quite variable and ever changing. Specifically, to look at the beef sector, beef alone is estimated to have lost about 28,000 head per day of slaughter capacity, which represents about 24% of total slaughter capacity in North America. Shifting to have a closer look at demand, a rapid decline in demand is not only being seen in the US, but also internationally as well. This is highlighted by the significant drop in institutional food demand from restaurant and food services. Expectations are for a continued shift lower in this demand in coming weeks, as retail stores are continuing to reduce their purchases. This follows a recent initial wave of panic buying when stay at home orders first ensued. And now that people are staying at home uh, with sufficient supply of meat, we're seeing a significant drop in consumption. Also related to this point is a shift in demand uh, from meat cuts utilized by the institutional sector as people shift towards more retail sectors for the home consumers. This can be seen particularly in the high value cuts such as steaks, uh, where yeah, the home consumer tends to consume the cheaper cuts. U.S. outbound export shipments are also falling. Uh, we have seen export product continue to take up increasing valuable cold storage space. This lack of available cold, cold storage space is becoming an increasing concern. Most inventories have been backing up uh, from both domestic and imported supplies. And as demand construction continues to prevail as people stay at home, we are seeing a shift away from meat consumption into more bread and vegetables. In short, current issues are slowing demand. This means U.S. cold stores are carrying this burden of oversupply. We can also see the impacts now back to farm gate as live inventories held on farm are continuing to be fed to higher weights, uh, higher slaughter weights and increased inventories are growing on live animals as well. 
the end of the day, we're seeing the impact of this back up in the supply chain, resulting in lower farm gate prices for live animals produced on farm. How long it's going to take to sort these issues out remain extremely uncertain, and it's going to vary by region and also by animal sector. Longer term results will, I believe, be continued lower prices across the livestock sector in what initially started out this year as being a very optimistic growing opportunity for feed grains demand is now turned around and not looking very bright at all. I also think we're going to see a longer term impact on this changing shift in demand pattern that's going to last beyond uh, this particular event of the COVID-19 virus. There remains an extreme amount of uncertainty in the marketplace. How long this will last will yet has yet to be seen, but it's going to have a significant impact not only on meat values, but on feed grain and, and plant protein demand. And it continues to push both corn, grain, sorghum, and soybean prices lower. Thank you. You can refer to this presentation and my weekly comments on the Ag Manager website which is updated every week. Thank you very much.